86 is old American English slang, meaning to throw away or get rid of someone or something. The exact origin of the term, 86, is hard to pin down, but through time it also referred to ideas of rejection, abandonment, and eventually murder. 86 is also a Japanese light novel series by Asado Asado, focused on an outcast group of people stripped of their humanity and forced into a series of military suicide missions. Give it a dash of science fiction and messages about drone warfare, and you get an interesting premise. Even Edward Snowden is given a shout out, and these themes of wartime racism and the growing dangers of advancing military technology are far from unique, as anime like Attack on Titan and Code Geass can attest. Yet despite many good examples of these kind of stories, 86 somehow manages to be the most shallow interpretation of them all. The series opens with a CGI battlefront and the voice of a commander taunting his mechanized squadron because he knows he's just sent them off to their death. He finds it hilarious, literally calling them 86 scum and giving us his best Joker laugh until he realizes they're not dying. <laughs> then, the comically evil voice turns into the sounds of confusion and screaming before the title card, immediately giving us the impression that this race of soldiers is discriminated against, but in probably the cheapest way possible. Cut to the other side of the war, and we're in the Republic of San Magnolia, walking through a bright, peaceful capital filled with only those with silver hair and silver eyes, among which are soldiers walking around in blue German and military uniforms, making it abundantly clear just from its visuals that this story is meant to be about Nazi Germany and its views on racial superiority. A cheerful weather forecast transitions into a proud military news update, reporting on how their ethically responsible drone units have made it so that there are no more human lives lost from their war efforts. But we as the viewer already know that's not actually the case, and that this nation has only grown to view the soldiers who operated the drones as less than human, further solidifying how twisted and cynical their ideology can be. All of this is a lot better than our initial prologue in terms of subtly presenting what we want to convey, and utilizing the golden rule of show don't tell. That is until Lena, our female protagonist, walks into work past groups of blatantly drunk officers laughing loudly about how many of their 86 soldiers died in battle yesterday. When they sarcastically point out they're lucky they weren't people, I just sighed in disappointment at how every Everything this show just did well was going down the drain. Moments later, there's an awkward interaction with a random soldier yelling he won't listen to the bitching from the pigs of District 86, followed by a contrived discussion ending with the question, why do you care about the 86, even after it's already been made clear that Lana obviously sees the 86 as people, and that people shouldn't be treated like that. What the fuck kind of question is that? What is even happening anymore? Why is there a long pause and inner reflection over this? These are the first of many terribly written scenes which take away any effort this anime does in establishing any kind of subtle or interesting message, treating you as the dumbest viewer in the world who has never heard about racism in your entire life. Taking a step back, the gist of the full plot here is that weapon systems have advanced too far, and now a hive mind army of rogue artificial intelligence drones called the Legion threatens to invade every nation. But the perfect drone army has a time limit of about six years, and at the time our story starts, there's only two years left. With the clock running out, the drones are growing desperate, and have learned how to capture usable human brains, giving them more intelligence for their war efforts. Meanwhile, San Magnolia had previously targeted a race of people and sent them to concentration camps within their 86th district. They were stripped of all human rights and forced to participate in military operations against the Legion. The missions themselves always eventually result in their death, as the Republic has no intention of letting them live to speak out against their atrocities. It's a lot of cool world building that's done well, actually, but the writing just doesn't know how to gracefully present these ideas. When Lana is assigned the Spearhead Squadron, piloted by our main cast of District 86 soldiers out on the front lines, her superior tells her to stop including the number of fatalities in her reports because officially, there aren't any. The obvious racism bad argument ensues, and all of its dialogue makes me feel like I'm watching an episode of Sesame Street. It's not like there's some weird case where only a few know the drones have people in them. At one point, Lena awkwardly interrupts a class lecture to try to explain the truth to some of the students, but they all just act like she's crazy because they already know it's propaganda, but they've all just embraced it. Everyone knows the drones are piloted by the 86. They've just disregarded their existence as humans. That's unironically why they're called pigs if they're acknowledged at all. But if you're gonna have your story tell an important message about 
the evils of propaganda leading to racism, you should probably do more than just say propaganda bad. I mean, hell, fans arguing about the final season of Attack on Titan right now kind of shows us how easily people can be convinced to enact genocide and somehow not see it as a bad thing at all. So when you present to me a comically evil society, I'm not going to take most of your messaging seriously. I mean, you could go watch one Darman video and you'll know how I felt with the writing of this anime. The mom starts to realize that maybe girls can be gamers. Luckily, this kind of ham-fisted writing mostly goes away for the second core of 86, but it does so by devolving into a more basic series of intense battle action that somehow feels less impactful than before. Probably because their reason for fighting is lessened since they're no longer forced into it by a racist nation. Now they just do it because it's all they know. Really deep stuff. It also melts down the surviving squad into bland background characters, leaving our male protagonist Shin and this new child who shows up as the main focus of the plot. Before, we had a diverse group of interesting personalities struggling to endure in the face of their impending military death sentence. With Shin getting the worst of it, he's forced to listen to the cursed voices of the dead which the Legion of Drones have stolen, and he's seen as a bad omen within the 86, given the nickname Reaper of the Eastern Front due to many missions which ended with him as the sole survivor. Shin is haunted by both the traumatic memories of his brother, along with the guilt of those that died fighting with him, and the show tackles this growing detachment between Shin and his humanity in a very decent way. But it's just disappointing to have his squad members reduced to either fodder or more contrived dialogue to handhold the viewer. Throughout most of it, I couldn't help but wonder, why is this show acting so much deeper than it really is? Because at times it feels impactful, but then you think about what just happened or what they just said, and you realize it didn't actually add anything that we didn't already get. So I struggled for a while to understand why I don't completely hate this when almost everything about its writing makes me want to roll my eyes out of my head. And then I realized it was just every other part of this anime doing whatever it can to salvage the story, especially in terms of direction. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of things about this anime that's really well done. Probably the best thing about this anime is its amazing direction by Toshimasa Ishii. This man is so good at what he does, he can somehow turn an umbrella commercial into an emotional experience experience and make it look effortless. In my mind, Ishii saved this anime as much as he could with the source material he was given. And I'm so glad this guy finally got his directorial debut, and I share the same views as people like Canapa Effect, in that I hope 86 doesn't get another season so that Ishii can work on something worth his time. Just watch episode 22 and you can feel his visionary power and passion literally step out of the screen to bring you back to life. The second core definitely had production issues, but overall, a1 Pictures did a decent job with what they had to deal with. Despite several delays, recap episodes, and having to push back the last two episodes for an entire season, in the end, it didn't fall flat on its face like Wonder Egg Priority did, so there's that. Again, it's just disappointing to me that all this effort seems wasted on amateur writing. It makes many parts feel artificial, and that those scenes deserve so much more. But there are some cool ideas presented, like everything involving the Legion technology and the political backstory of these nations. So I guess it's more like Asado Asado came up with the driest dialogue and surface level messages for this awesome world she built up. Or maybe the light novels are actually presented well for its medium, but it just doesn't translate as good for a screenplay. Although even when it comes to battles in the anime, I hated most of them. Visually, they felt gross and confusing. I could barely tell what was happening and who was doing anything, and that's only when I can manage to ignore the ugly CGI spider tanks. I sleep on your spider tank bullshit. But that sound direction and voice acting though, I'm wide awake for that. Especially when you mix in a Sawano soundtrack. That's, that's the good stuff. I've been told in defense of my complaints about the writing that what makes people like this series is its elements of romance, which baffles me because that felt non-existent in the anime outside of small crushes among members of the 86. I don't feel the romantic development between Lena and Shin from their nightly report calls. And if you call me blind for not seeing it, you're probably clinging to the hope one day your Discord crush will start a long-distance relationship with you. You guys are weird and think opposite sexes just talking for long periods of time means they love each other, even if they're forced to because of their jobs, or because lives are on the line. Like, sure, the series hints at future romance between our two leads, that I don't doubt. 
but you would never sell this anime to someone for its romance, because that just doesn't exist yet. At least not from what the anime has covered so far. Especially not in the second core. In fact, the second core barely has Lena in the show. So I don't know, maybe they're just mixing up the anime with parts of narration in the novels. In any event, now I can finally say I'm done with 86. I've gathered enough of my thoughts to be satisfied, and I can finally move on, or at least until it gets another season. I can't confidently say I wouldn't give it another chance, especially knowing the next part is where the romance side actually develops. Maybe I'm just biased towards the science fiction side of all this. The Legion as a concept might one day get an anime science video all on its own. In the meantime, I guess I'll just say, watch out for whatever Toshimasa Ishii directs next. Thanks for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts on 86 in the comments down below, especially if you read the light novels because I'd love to hear how different the presentation is, and if I might enjoy that more. Hopefully I didn't piss you guys off too much, but anyways, I'm getting myself ready for the next anime season. We got Spy Family, Kaguya-sama Season 3, and Shikimori coming out, so I'm hyped for all that. And if you are too, you can come hang out in my Discord server, where we watch all of the anime seasonals and post only the highest quality memes. Guys, come on, you're missing out here. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter and consider supporting me on Patreon, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thank <laughs> you.